So I recently did something that has been recommended to me for a couple of months now. Ah, I got a new pair of climbing shoes. I've been waiting to do some research so I have a good idea of what kind of climbing shoes I want to buy, but recently I went climbing and uh, my black diamonds weren't in my bag. So I decided it was time to get new shoes. And I thought it'd be a good idea to compare the shoes from a beginner's point of view to maybe help out other new climbers because new climbing shoes are a very expensive decision that can end pretty uncomfortably. And since this video is directed towards new climbers, I'm going to start with the rental shoe. So listen, in my opinion, the rental shoe is a great shoe until you try something else and then you'll never want to go back again. Personally, I would recommend climbing in rental shoes until you've gone through a couple of those uh, 10 entry punch cards that gyms tend to give out. And once you're sending V3s, maybe the occasional V4, and you're thinking, hmm, I want to commit a little more to the climbing sport. That is actually when I would go out and buy your first pair of shoes. And once you get to this point, you're going to be introduced to a very opinionized world. So now I'm going to add to the pool of wide ranging opinions. <laughs> so I decided that my first pair of shoes is going to be decided based off availability and price. Um, and I highly recommend that most people probably do the same thing. Basically, the gym I climb at, Vertical Ventures, they have a deal where you can get your first pair of shoes, a harness, a chalk bag, and a month membership for a set price. And after you add everything up, it is totally worth it because the shoes and the membership alone would cost probably more than just the set price that you're paying for the whole package. And the deal is that part of the package, you have to get the recommended starter shoe. But if you want a different model or a different shoe overall, you just have to pay the difference between what the recommended shoe is versus what the one you want is. And so it's not a big deal. Actually, what I ended up doing is just getting the recommended starter shoe, which were the Black Diamond Momentum Lace. Oops. I think these were awesome as a first time shoe. They are flat. They have a pretty decent grip. They have a medium flex. Um, the rubber all around is pretty durable. And most importantly, and I say most importantly, they are comfortable. Now granted, I did get a size too big, but they were fine at first. It wasn't until I wore them in a little bit that I started getting a little more space inside, especially in the toe box area. But I was able to compensate by just tightening the laces a little bit more. Now, I doubt there's any perfect pair of climbing shoes out there, but it's time to criticize these suckers a little bit. They came short in two main ways. Now, they do have a thicker heel back here, but they don't have a ton of heel support in my opinion. Uh, as you can see, you get the thicker rubber up to here, and then from this point on, it gets pretty soft. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to use my heels a lot. And whenever the climb relies more on like a heavy heel position, this sometimes would hurt more than I'd like it to. Number two on the list of things that I think is kind of sucky about these shoes is there's no grip on the top area. Um, makes toe hooks a lot more difficult than it used to be. Uh, as you can see, the rubber does come up a little bit, but past this point, you just have this clothy material, which is kind of slippery when you're trying to toe hook some holes. And I'm sure you could, you know, live without it if you're good at toe hooks, if you have really strong tension compression. Um, but whenever you're trying to send the climb, it's a little harder than you're used to. And you have to repeat the same toe hook over and over again. Even if you're strong, you're going to end up getting tired. And uh, yeah, I would just like more rubber on top. And yeah, after that, I don't really have any other criticisms. I would like a stiffer shoe. I don't know if it's in my head or if it's actually happening, but I feel like after a while, the bottom of these got a lot softer. And uh, I don't know, I feel like my feet just maybe aren't that strong um, and I would like something stiffer to help me climb on those uh, tiny little stubs. But I actually have a funny little story about these shoes. So they were starting to smell pretty bad. Uh, it wasn't the fault of the shoe. It was just, you know, the natural progression of climbing shoes, I guess. Um, and I bought some spray to kind of make it better. Actually, you know what, hold on. I bought this stuff, didn't really do anything, kind of sucked. Uh, so it was getting to a point where I could no longer stand it. And I thought about it, I'm like, hmm, why is it smell? Oh yeah, bacteria builds up in the shoe, kind of gross, but whatever. Um, and I was like, what kills bacteria? I'll boil the shoes. <laughs> so so uh, I did that. I threw these inside a mop bucket and then I boiled a bunch of water, poured it over the shoes and uh, it solved my problem. The smell went away <laughs> and a bonus. And by the way, I expected this to happen. The shoe shrank a little bit. Uh, so that was good because, you know, they were already big on me previously. So that actually made them a little better for climbing. Now granted, the shoe did get destroyed, kind of. Um, like glue started squeezing out of some areas. The rubber started detaching from the shoe itself. Um, kind of like right here in the edge. 
But uh, overall, it was kind of a silly experiment to boil these things, but it worked. It, you know, it extended the life uh, of these shoes for at least a few months for me. But also, I would not recommend boiling your shoes to, well, really anyone. Uh, this was just kind of like a last resort because I was about to get rid of them anyway. Now it's time to review the Scarpas. So like I said, I forgot my black diamonds and I decided it was time to get new shoes. So I went over to this shoe section at the gym and I was instantly overwhelmed because there were so many options. Luckily, the staff at the gym helps you figure out what shoe is going to be right for you. So there was somebody that came over to kind of help me and take me through the shoe buying process. Now, there's two things I knew I wanted out of my new climbing shoes. I wanted them to be a little more aggressive. I wanted a better point for climbing on those tiny little stubs. Uh, I was tired of slipping off them and I wanted more grip in the toe area. But I didn't really know anything else that I should be looking at when buying these shoes. So I actually tried a couple different brands. I tried some Evolve. I tried some La Sportivas. Uh, I'm sorry to all the brands I'm saying if I'm mispronouncing you. I am not good at pronunciations. Now, I can't remember which ones it was, but there was a shoe that had a really soft feeling point. And that was really odd to me because um, I was standing on it and my shoe was kind of wiggling on the point. And other pairs were just incredibly uncomfortable, which, you know, I was told that it's just going to depend on the person. Um, everybody's going to have a different foot, so things are going to fit them differently. But for me, the most comfortable were the Scarpas, which also happened to be the most expensive shoes at the gym. <sighs> but you know what? I was willing to pay for shoes that were going to last me, hopefully, a year or two. By the way, these are called the Scarpa Instincts VS. Now, I've had one full climbing session in them, and I really like them so far. Now, I obviously haven't had a chance to you know, fully test out the toe hooks and the heel hooks, but I did try some hooking. The gym staff told me I'm not allowed to buy them until I try them out on like a climb or two. So I really appreciate the push to make sure that these things fit right. Now, I do already have some things that I'm not a fan of. So for example, there's some dead space in the heel. The only way I can make that dead space go away is if I downsize so much that my toes felt like they would explode. So I decided not to do that. <laughs> um, I'll take a little bit of dead space in the heel versus exploding toes. Now I do have some wide feet, so that might be why I'm getting such discomfort. Um, but you know, I also know that a lot of people like to downsize a lot and they like that feeling of tightness because it makes it better to climb, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna stick to a little bit larger size. Still tight, but a little bit larger. Now the second meh kind of thing was in the left shoe only. Um, above my big toe, there was a spot that was kind of rubbing into my toe. I think it's a kind of like manufacturing defect or something. Um, but it gave me a blister and then it broke the blister in that one climbing session. So that wasn't great. Uh, I'm probably going to treat it to some sandpaper. So <laughs> we'll see how that ends up long term. So let me go a little bit into why I think you should follow my path in how you choose your shoes. Um, I'm not saying pick the same shoes I did, by all means, you know, try out whatever you can and, and see what's most comfortable, pick whatever you like the most. But I think your first pair should be something cheaper because odds are you're going to outgrow your shoes fairly quickly. And I don't mean your foot's going to grow. I mean, you're going to become a better climber. You're going to learn what you like. You're going to learn what you hate and you're going to learn what you want in your next pair of shoes. And since good shoes can cost $150 to $200, that kind of sucks to spend that kind of money and then replace them in a few months. And I don't think you should start with higher level shoes either because, well, your feet still have a lot to learn about climbing and it's just stuff that you can't really learn in rental shoes. And again, you can probably buy a great pair of starter shoes from your gym for a really good deal. Now, I'm not going to speak for every gym out there, but I'm pretty sure your gym's going to have one. So I hope this helps some of you sharing my non-expert thoughts on some climbing shoes. If it did, feel free to subscribe, leave a like, and maybe if you're long past your first pair of climbing shoes, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about climbing shoes, how to pick your first pair, or long term, how you like your shoes. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.